Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Marhaban bikum ya tulab. Welcome to class 26. Today we will be taking chapter 11. Al darsu madha? Al hadi ashar. Turn to page 61. You're all there? Al darsu al hadi ashar. Hadha al dars yatahadath an shayain. We'll be talking about two things mostly and we'll be talking about using the verb habba and how to attach how to attach a dhamir to fi okay ana saqra wa antum isma'u ana saqra wa antum isma'u all right i will read and you listen bayti هذا بيتي بيتي أمام المسجد بيتي جميل فيه حديقة صغيرة هذه غرفتي فيها نافذة كبيرة Alright, so far up until this point we're seeing a lot of usage of what? The E at the end of a word. We said if you continuously have E at the end, what does it mean? My all right, Beiti. We took the word bait and we added e to it. This is old. This is like a revision lesson, uh, chapter eleven. Beiti amam al masjidi. Right, my house is in front of the masjidi. Now, when I say without looking at your books, amam al masjidi. Does that masjid, the word masjidi, does it have a yet? No. No, it doesn't. It has a kesra. And how do we tell the difference? Because we're not saying my masjid. We're saying in front of the masjid. Right. So when you say it's your masjid, then yeah, it will have a yeah. But it's like, in front of my masjid. Then it can. Amama masjidi. Just a longer E. Alright? I don't know why he likes those kind of questions. <laughs> he likes to have the hypothetical. <laughs> فيها نافذة كبيرة second line ومروحة جميلة ما معنى مروحة no that's رائحة okay listen الذي يكون على السقف ويدور مروحة did I say it differently than you know I remember Okay, mirwaha means fan, all right? And why is it from ra'iha? Because it's moving the air. Ra'iha means like air, you know? So mirwaha is the thing that's moving the air. Mukayyaf is like this right here, the AC unit. Yeah? Window. Nafidatun is window. فيها نافذة كبيرة ومروحة جميلة هذا سريري وهذا كرسي وهذا مكتبي Why on kursi we had two yes? كرسي We already have one kursi Because the word kursi already has a yeah And we needed to add another yeah to do what? To make it mine كرسي Alright نافذة غرفتي مفتوحة نافذة غرفتي اسمعي مستأمين نافذة غرفتي what's نافذة window نافذة غرفتي what's غرفتي what's غرفتي yes my room and then نافذة غرفتي My room's window. All right? And this is very important. Like, we really need to know mudaf and mudafun ilay. If you want to make something yours, right? Or something belong to something else, you say, nafida means window, right? right. Normally, it's nafida tun. And then we're going to say, nafida tun. And we're going to put al ghurfa. This word by itself means what? The Th this room by itself means the room. 
all right? Nafidatun means a window by itself. And how do you make something a, like indefinite? A car, a boy, a house. The tenween, there won't be a l, right? And the tenween will be there. If tenween is there, it means it's unspecified, right? It's indefinite. So, in order to make that, you're saying the bedroom window or the room's window, you're going to get rid of one of these. It's getting worse now. Okay? Nafida tu. And now you're going to change this also. Nafida tul gurfa ti. And that means the bedrooms or the room's window. There's Remember, no that's right. There is no L. But this is the original one you guys learned. So remember, what this L, what does the L do? It specifies. Right. Makes it definite. Did anything here make ghurfa definite? Did we specify a room by adding this yet? Fine. We did. We did specify it. So this doesn't need L. It doesn't need it. And as a matter of fact, if you put L, it's wrong. If you say L ghurfati, I'm going to deduct two points. Not one, two. So, because you cannot specify it twice, you can't say the my room, right? It's either my room or the room. Clear? So this is already specified. Already here, it's mudaf and mudaf on ilay. Okay? No. Because it's going to be mudaf on ilay itself. Okay, now, we already have it saying, my room. So I don't want to, I need to specify it further and say, my, my room's window. So I can't say, my room's the window. It doesn't work. That's what happens if you put an L here. So, ghurfati is my room, and nafida too, with just one dhamma, because it itself is mudaf, right? That's how you say, my room's window. Hal min su'al. Any questions? Is it nafidatu or nafidatu? Oh, well, don't be so clever. Just tell me the da is missing and I'll put it there. I'm seriously confused. <laughs> no, no, it's a, there's a da. <laughs> it's nafida. What is miftu fatul? Oh, good. So... The next word says what? Miftah. Not miftah, maftu. We took what's the meaning of maftuhun. Maftuhun means what? Open. Al babu maftuhun. The door is open. If I was going to describe something feminine, right? I can't say maftuhun. I have to add the ta. To make it what? The description for a feminine object. And the nafida is what? Feminine. Even the room is feminine. But nafida, right? I'm saying now, maftuha tun. So my room's, or I'm sorry, yeah, my room's window, maftuha tun, is open. This is a sifa for something. What is it for? Sleep for? No, it's a description for? For the window. And that means since this is feminine, what does this need to be? Since this is dhamma, marfu', what does this need to be? Marfu'. And the reason why there's one here and two here, this is mudaf. And when it becomes mudaf, we get rid of one. So it's still marfu'. So there's no, there's no problem. This is marfu', that's marfu'. It would be a problem if it was a kasra. Right? Then 
this cannot remain this way. But since it's not, it's correct. So that was a review lesson. Like we took it before. We talked about mudafun ilay. It's something very important that you guys need to know. It's how you say this belongs to me or, you know, this belongs to that. It's very important for you to understand mudaf and mudafun ilay. Yes. Let me let me get uh, Mustafa's question. So, nafidatul ghurfati. With a ya or without a ya? Okay, nafidatul ghurfati. Huge. This one means the room's window. Right? Yeah, the room's window. And this one means my room's window. This is, it makes it definite, very good. Yes, but they both sound like they have a yeah. But this one is a kesra and this one is an actual yeah. Yeah, so they're both definite, but one of them here, this one here, it has a specific owner, and over here it's just that the room is specified, it's definite. Uh, in the second one, we are not writing tam or buta. Where? It's right here. This is the ta. Remember, if, a ta, if this ta um, gets anything attached to it, it just becomes a regular ta. Does that make sense? So if this ta, like sayyaratun, if I want to say sayyarati, do I write the ta marbuta and then just uh, put a yat next to it? No, I just get rid of it. It turns into a regular ta. Sayyaratun. And then I want to add that it's mine. Correct? Do I do this? Sayyara T? No, it has to connect. So this just becomes a regular tap. That's it. So the ta is still there. It just turns into a regular one. While the spell of writing or does it affect the, the way you read it? This? Like writing it separately or together. Well, Arabic has a way of, you know, writing. And it is that letters that can be connected need to be connected together. Otherwise it's just uh, it's just spelled wrong. And it makes it hard to read as well. Like I've like all of these, like right now it seems like it's hard. But here, some programs do this. Like if you ever try to go to like Google Translate, sometimes it does this. This is Sayara. Huh? It's jumbled. Even if you made space between them. Well, I forgot the Ra in there, but let's just put it in there. Well, it goes after the alif. Sayyara. So it just becomes a little bit, you know. Yeah, because there's line, you know, dots and lines, and Arabic itself is, you know, a language that is based on, you know, really strong calligraphy and things like that. So uh, it's not going to look very interesting like this. Tayyib. The next paragraph, you following? Yeah. All right. هَذِهِ غُرْفَةُ أَخِي Right? What's the meaning of that sentence? My brother's room. وَتِلْكَ غُرْفَةُ أُخْتِي They use tilka to mean that, and that, my sister's room. All right. غُرْفَةُ أَخِي كَبِيرَةٌ وَغُرْفَةُ أُخْتِي صَغِيرَةٌ Hazin. You know Hazin? Sad. All right, so غُرْفَةُ أَخِي كَبِيرَةٌ My brother's room is big. غُرْفَةُ أُخْتِي صَغِيرَةٌ My sister's room is small. غُرْفَةُ أَخِي أَمَامَ غُرْفَتِي Yeah, my room is in front of, or my brother's room in front of mine. وَغُرْفَةُ أُخْتِي أَمَامَ الْمَطْبَخِي And my sister's room is in front of the kitchen. Now, I separated that when I read it, right? 
But normally it's read like this. لِأَخٌ وَاحِدُ نُسْمُهُ وَحَدُ نِسْمُهُ Yeah? <laughs> so you guys can read it slowly. وَاحِدٌ إِسْمُهُ It's fine. Alright? I have one brother. لِأَخٌ وَاحِدٌ I don't say عِنْدِي أَخٌ وَاحِدٌ I say لِأَخٌ وَاحِدٌ Do you all remember why? لِ yeah. is used for? Person. Yeah, person, sibling. Li ibnun li akhun. I have a brother, I have a son. You don't say indi akhun and indi ibn. You say li. If you have an object, then you use indi. If you have, you know, a sibling, you say li or some other relation. Li. <sighs> I have a brother, his name is. I have a brother, li akhun wahidun. I have one brother, his name is Usama. وَلِأُخْتٌ وَاحِدَةٌ إِسْمُهَا سُعَادُ One sister named Su'ad. أَبِي وَأُمِّي فِي تِلْكَ الْغُرْفَةِ الْكَبِيرَةِ أَبِي وَأُمِّي are in, are in that big room. Right? أَنَا أُحِبُّ أَبِي وَأُمِّي وَأُحِبُّ أَخِي وَأُخْتِي أُحِبُّ is a new word. أُحِبُّ means to like or you say let me do it this way. I'm going to write two verbs for you here. So, and past tense verbs, right? We're just taking one simple word, and this is a special one. Habba. Yuhibbu. You like. Hold on. Yuhibbu. All right. Habba means he liked. Yuhibbu means he likes. Now, it also means love. You always hear it all the time in your guys' places. Habibi. Habibi, I need this. Habibi. Look at this thing here. Habba. It's taken from this. Habibi, yes. My love. But if they're talking to a girl, they're supposed to say Habiba T. Didn't know that. So they're going around telling other male people, Habibi, Habibi, my love, my love. Can you imagine that? That's why in, in Yemeni culture, it's offensive. You don't hear a lot of Yemeni say that. Because it's offensive. You don't go up to another man and say, Habibi. It's, I don't know why. I'm just saying it's offensive. Huh? Why is there two yad in that? Because it's from Habibun. Yeah, Habibun. And then it's like loved one. Mm. Yeah, you know, when you say Habibun, it's loved one. So the, the and it can be, like I said, like in the past. this is for he likes. He I'm sorry, he liked past. Past, he liked. Okay. And this one, he likes. You, Hibbu. So, uh, it's also possible to say Habibti or not? Habibti? Yeah. Uh, that's just slang. It's supposed to be Habibeti. I mean, there's plenty. When you, when you open the door for slang, there's a lot of ways things are said. All right, so now we did he, but that's not what we have in the book. What do we have? Ooh, right? Uhibbu. You see how this starts out with a dhamma? So if, what, if you had to guess, right? Uhibbu is here or here? Is it past or present? Present? Is it, this is present. This is for now. It's for present. Ooh. Oh, I'm sorry. This is this should be a yeah. Yuhibbu. That should be a yeah. Correct it if you have it wrong. Ooh. Hibbu. This is what is known as Mudari'. Just present. Like. Huh? Like? Yes, I like or I love. Uhibbu. Uhibbu al masjid, right? Uhibbu salah, right? Um, anything. Uhibbu means I like. This yeah. word right here. That? No, because this alif is already for ana. So it's just here, just, just because? Ana uhibbu? It's just emphasized. You don't have to put ana. But it's just there to 
to let you know that it's for Anna. So what's this top one for? He, he liked. liked. He liked. He likes. He likes. All right. And uhibbu. This is all we need to take right here. But I wanted to give you the origin so that you know where they come from. All right. Yeah. So now he says, "Ana uhibbu abi wa uhibbu abi wa ummi wa uhibbu akhi wa ukhti." Correct? All right, very good. So like I said, this lesson is mostly review, except for this word, uhibbu, uh, and a little bit of an, what do you call it? We've taken it before, but we're going to point it out now clearly. If we say huwa, right? And we say hiya. What does huwa mean? He. Was he a? She. Uh, can I erase this? All right. If you're talking about an object like, for example, your book, right? If you want to say, I have that in my book. You say, fi kitabi, right? We have the word kitab in my book. But what if you want to say just in it? Huh? Now, the book is masculine. Right? And we say whenever we want to add a masculine object, you guys remember this was on the test? How to use these? Remember? So which one of these two am I going to use to say in it? Good. So I'm going to say... And here's, here's a little bit of thing that's going to maybe throw you off a little bit. Fi. He. Oh, because the fee. Uh, not, it's because of the fee, but it didn't get, you know, majroor, because this is mebni. It didn't get majroor because it's mebni. I know that's hard to understand. It, it, the kesar is there. So you'd say, this is majroor. But the reason why it came was because of the yeah. It's yeah. easier because uh, try to say fihu. It's not easy. Fihu. <laughs> no, fihi. Say say fihi. <laughs> no, be honest. Which one's easier to say? <laughs> it's, might as well say whatever. Japanese. <laughs> fihi. It's there for ease. So this he is still who. It's still for hua. That's all I'm trying to say. All right, and this is a little extra. It's not really in the book. So imagine what is going to happen when you add ila to him or to it. Are you going to say ilehu or ilehi? Ilehi. So you never. It's never who. Not when it gets attached to these haruf jar. No. But remember, it's not that they are. Uh, this is not the. They're mebni. Meaning that it didn't change. What about if it's feminine? Do do? We're going to take it right here. Okay. All right, you guys got fihi? What does fihi mean? How do you use it in, in him or in it? How do you use it in, in the sentence? That's what I was saying. Like if I want to say, you know, my pen is in my book, you know, al-qalam fihi. The pen is in it. If you and I are talking and you know my book, you say, where's my ina qalami? Where's my pen? Fihi, you know, in, in it. No, you don't need kitab. You already have it. Uh, does this yeah. work for all of these types of jar? Like, you, you, could you use it for ala? Yes. So, so it would be ali? Alayhi. Alayhi. Oh. Yeah. Fihi can be used oh, for thing or person. Well, fi means it. This word means it. So huwa means him or it masculine object. Tayyib? Now, Either it means her, right? Or it means it, feminine object. So you're going to say, fi, ha. That didn't change. The fee, what was the fi again? In it? Yeah. In it or in him. Who's getting clever now? No, you're right. Is that it? 
It is. You say ilayha, ilayhi, alayha. You know. Why did ya change the? It's easier. Usually, whenever the Arab are speaking, they'll try to use the words that are easier to be said. Like it's just too hard to keep it as a lamma, so they change it to make it easy. Because it's easy. You don't have to. Like this, this. Trying to pronounce, this is fetha. Fetha is not a strong haraka, but dhamma is a strong haraka. So therefore it needed to be changed. And it's, it's only this specific one, not like any way they change it. It happens a lot wherever sometimes the letter's too hard, so they'll change it out of ease. Okay. But they're, you know, they're not the, the main rule. They're just the exceptions to the rules. Yeah. No, you see, that's what I'm saying. It's mebni. It doesn't, it's st- you're going to say its status is, is majrur, but it can't be shown because this word is mebni. Like, don't get all crazy about the grammar, honestly. Just worry about the, worry about the, yeah. That's all you need to know. This means in it, and this means in it as well. In it, masculine, masculine object, or in him, in her, or in it, feminine object. Fiha? What does that mean? In, in the car. No, no. It's already it, so you can't You could just say fi sayarati. In the car. Yeah. If you and I are talking, I say, you know. How do you say the key in the car? You know how to say that. You want to, but you want to use fihi. Yeah. But how would you say that in English? It's in the car. It's in the car, right? Yeah. You said it. Yes. So you should use hua or hia. You shouldn't worry about fi. You should use hua or hia. So if you're wearing the key, you say hua is masculine, so you say hua. Hua fis sayarati. It is in the car. That's how you say it in English, right? Key is masculine. Key is masculine. Don't you remember the test? <laughs> you should remember, especially. <laughs> 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 You guys, uh, look at the bottom there. اقرأ واكتب من في هذا البيت Right? Who is in this house? Did they re- respond by repeating the word house? Did they say في هذا البيت? No. They just simply said فيه حامد Hamid is in it. Or in it is Hamid. Either way is correct. Is that clear, Muallim? ماذا في الحقيبة? What is in the bag? فيها كتابي وقلمي ودفتري. ماذا is just another way to say what? ما. It's just another way to say ما. If you want to be specific, it's like what is this in the bag? Because remember ذا for هذا. Yeah. Turn the page. ما في السيارة فيها أبي وأمي وأخي وأختي. What is in the car? I'm sorry, men. Yes, who? I should say men. من في السيارة فيها أبي وأمي وأخي وأختي. Who is in the car? من في في مسجد الجامعة الآن. What does that mean? Man fi masjid al jamia. Yeah. With something with. What's masjid al jamia? Yes. Yes. Remember, this book is for the Islamic University of Medina, so they're teaching them how to interact around campus sometimes. If you're wondering, like, why they bring this word, it's to teach them how to interact around campus. Masjid al jamia is the university's masjid. Ma fihi ahadun. What does that mean? I don't know. What's Who's ahad? Who's no, one no one is there. No one is in it, actually. Yeah, when you say ma fihi. Now this ma, actually this ma is uh, a ma we've never taken before. Ma is a No, not a noun. Here's, some, here's a new ma. So this, maybe this lesson has three things then. Ma is used for negation. Did we? 
we talked used? about it. Okay, we talked about it before? Like yeah. Good. Ma is used to negate, like to say, uh, not have or something. So he says, Ma fihi ahadun. This is used to say, like, one. Or it could be anyone. All right? So what are they asking? Who is in what? Now, who's in the university's masjid, right? And they said, Ma fihi ahadun. All right? Actually, over here is going to be no one. No one is in it. You can say Ma ahadun, right? No. Ma fihi. Right? So this is used to negate no one. No one is in it. No one is in it. It's not used to say no as in la. It's used as no as in to negate something. Is it called the uh, huruf nida? This one? No, this is called ma an nafia. So ahadun can mean one, anyone, or no one? It depending, yeah. If, I mean, when you have ma there, it's going to be for no one. Oh. Yeah. So usually it's just for ahad. Or, you know, one. Last sentence almost. Men fi hadihi al ghurfa fiha al mudiru. Who's in this room? The mudir is in it. Iqra. Uhibbu abi wa ummi. I love my mother and father. Uhibbu akhi wa ukhti. Brother and sister. Uhibbu zamili. I like my classmate. Uhibbu ustadi. Ah, very good. I only heard a few people say that. Uhibbu Allah. I love Allah. And it says with the fatha, Allah ha. Uhibbu Allah ha. Uhibbu nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right? Uhibbu lughata al arabiyata. Yeah. It is the language Allah decided to send His last book. That's why we love it. It's not out of nationalism or out of anything like that, but it's because it's the language Allah chose that the Quran would be in. And you see, huh? Uh, difference of opinion on this one, but uh, Allah knows best. You know, yeah. But um, with that, we will be done with this lesson, inshallah ta'ala. Do you guys have any questions? Ma? It's context. It'll be context. So you have to. You have to, to the and, uh, yeah, it, it's yeah. easy. Like you, he, like a person might no. <laughs> a person might, uh, you know, ask you a question like, uh, you know, did you go to the masjid today? And you say ma the hebtu. You know, you, you could just immediately know. Like he's not asking a question. If he's, and that and that's why they say that's why they add mada like if you want to say what like you yeah if you want to say like mada to you might say what did you say that's why they say mada you know instead of ma only it's flexible all right we'll stop there read that lesson read the next dialogue for next week inshallah ta'ala will continue next monday normal time um assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh